Oh, breaking news report. We had to change the title of the show to P. Diddy Diddler's Home, being raided by the FBI and DHS. That's happening live, and we'll keep you lively updated all night. This is the Failure to Stop podcast, Uncuffed Monday, society and culture news with comedian and former police officer Jay Darrell White, comedian Margaret Owens. We're in the house. We just got done watching Eyes Wide Shut. No, what was it? What was it called? Uh, quiet on the set quiet on the set quiet on the set um speaking of diddlers quiet on the set uh we've also got some weird news about mark Wahlberg and forrest gump uh what else we got dead leg real quick oh the uh the cop that oh laverne the, the, laverne the laverne the laverne slut um who just got paid uh, out tons of money for being herself awesome all this and more on today's failure to steps uncuff monday hit it joshua The growing calls across the nation to defund the police. To end policing as we know it. Off the charts violence in New York City. 11 people shot in just eight hours on Sunday. This is Sunday. about the police officers, officers who every single day put on that uniform and they run towards danger when we run away from it. Yeah, dude, could you imagine being the manager, like the city mayor, and we're like, we gotta pay this ugly bitch five hundred thousand. She wanted to give up her ass. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what? Uh, that was mean. Um, were we? Was I muted on that? I wasn't Does it getting burnt? I wasn't muted. I'm just kidding. I knew I wasn't muted. I said it. I own it. I own what I say. I say what I own. Got a live chat already. It's going to be a good show. It's going to be a good show. Mike Dutcher, Michael Hendricks, Will Craig. Bonita. Hey, Bonita. Who? Oh, Bonita. Oh, Margaret. Oh, yeah. Hey. Bonita. Margaret's cousin. Whole family on. Oh, hey, other. Yeah. That one I was um, trying to imagine how she talked last week. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Bonita Morgan. Uh, ben Allen. Says, uh-oh, Diddy getting diddly. Puff Daddy going to ride in the paddy. Oh, wow. He's got a lot. Of Sean John getting his Epstein on. <laughs> Shiny soup, man. Got kids man, they, to they, boot, they, man. In <laughs> prison, Puffy going to be stuck. They, they gave him too much time. Ooh. They ain't going to find shit. Dude, they they don't gave him too much time. Is Ben Allen White? You think Ben Allen? His Allen's ass white? is a billionaire. He already know they coming to his house to raid it. He done got rid of all the evidence. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I get, he done been getting away with it all this long, and they done gave him enough. Believe me, he a billionaire. Yeah, he that gone done. He got there's some officers or somebody done slipped up and done get what happened to on the, him, and he done got that, what got happened whatever. to the last billionaire that got wrapped up in this sex trafficking? What's the last billionaire that got wrapped up in sex trafficking, and what happened to him? About uh. What's his name? Weinstein? Epstein. Epstein. He didn't he kill himself? Yeah. Well, allegedly. He, well, he he was weak. <laughs> he, he was, was a weak, weak punk motherfucker. That's what he <laughs> was. I'm saying he's a billionaire and he went to prison. He took his, took his you don't think Diddy goes to prison? Oh shit. If he do, he's not gonna be out there in the public. I mean, he's he gonna be in PC. And he gonna be he still got his money. You think I don't be, give a damn uh, how long he been, but he's still gonna have his money. So he's still gonna be there's gonna be guards that's gonna uh, show him favoritism. But Epstein didn't get any of that. Epstein won't in the music, was it? No. Oh, so you think music's different? Hell yeah. Oh, what? you think R. Kelly, R. Kelly, even though R. Kelly done mess with all them girls, you think they beating him up and punking him in prison? No. You don't he, think they're loving him from no, dust till dawn? He's making phone calls to their girlfriends <laughs> and their female. Do you mind if I see you somehow? You know, doing those little uh, girl like R. Kelly singing to you. He gonna, you know, Valentine's oh, Day. Oh, but there's a, yeah. but there's a federal oh. prison. But yeah, there's another yeah. guy down there that did yeah, some button. money laundering or something. He's down there. Older guy, yeah. I think his name. Yeah, he's down there too. But see, even though R. Kelly don't have the money like a P. Diddy. He has talent. I want to. He has that talent and everything, and that's 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 what is is surviving. That's how he's surviving in prison because of his talent. Who he is? He's the king. They consider him the king of R and B. Those guys are protecting him. You probably got people running up to him. I'm like, what you got to think about this man? Right. So he's got a lot of allegations on him. Now he's wrapped up right now. For those of you who are new to the P Diddy saga, here he is caught up in a sex trafficking scandal this time now this has been growing since um well i mean take a look at this clip right here because we we covered this on this show 
this exact interview. Let's go back to it and see what we learned a few weeks ago. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All of these uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The oh. truth is the light. See, and the Louis kind of teased around, like wanting to know, like, what, like, is this guy just bad? Shit? Is Cat Williams just I lost his mind? Is is he dumb? Is he crazy? But I mean, he literally said P Diddy, and who else did he say? Bishop T D K. And you said, you Pray said that before said, the show, Pray before you saw that clip today, and we're reminded of it. You mentioned T. I don't know. Oh, about raiding his chicken his house. Yeah, you think yeah. you think they're gonna check know, his house too? If they say birds of a feather flock together, because sometimes you eat with somebody you don't really flock with them. I mean, you don't really mean you. You're really not birds of a feather. You just right. around them. But if that's true, what they're saying about him, he may have something in his home too. But if it's not true, then he ain't got nothing to worry about. Hmm. I don't know. I think this is getting spicy. It's heating up. You know, P Diddy's probably gonna. Now, do you think P Diddy snitches to get? To get out of a little bit of this, do you think what, he what? takes a plea deal and and snitches on a bunch of other people with this whole sex trafficking thing? Now, listen, let me ask you this too. Let me let me let me let me compound it with this too, Jay. We've been talking about Holly weird, Hollywood pedophiles. We just watched a crazy Netflix, uh, uh not Netflix, um, a Nickelodeon special thing mm -hmm. here. Do you think that this sex trafficking by Diddy? Do you think it goes way deeper than Diddy? And does he expose more of it to save his own ass? I don't think it's going to go deeper. He He's the main dude. I mean, he's he's the most, I mean, he's like worth almost a billion dollars, if not over a billion dollars. Right. And and he 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 created, he he he's responsible for a lot of careers in the music, a lot of big, uh, you know, big music. Uh, and he, he has that power. He has that power. Um, and I, I hate to talk about the dude because you know, innocent until proven guilty type type. Well, situation. if if he did what all he did, then yeah, he he's fucked up. But the thing is, he did these to grown people though. These was uh, adults that he, he's doing this to. The other oh, stuff okay. that we were talking about was kids. Okay. The kids didn't know no better. I think the parents, like R. Kelly, R. Kelly did stuff with young girls that was underage, right. and their parents was there allowing them to do it. You know, not saying what he was doing was right, but I mean, it's that power. It goes back. Was he drugging them, or was That's they? What the allegations or, or was are they? Or, the or was they just freely giving up the ass and doing whatever? Right. Because they figure, oh, I do this with Diddy. I, you know, he, right. he's the man. He's the one that can give my career. Or you and know, they don't get the blah, career. Blah, blah. They kind of, you know, what I'm saying, yeah. See, with Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby was accused of. Giving women, you know, oh yeah, Roofies, yeah. He lure them up there <clears throat> for the and and they, oh yeah, I'm gonna uh, be an actress. He's gonna recommend it and that, and then he put something in their drink, get them all drugged up, and then he have sex with them. See, it, is Diddy being accused of that? That I don't know. Is yeah, he being yeah, accused yeah, of I mean, drugging it, people and, and sex on them, or is he are, doing this willingly? I'll, I'll go over some of the allegations here. So it's in 2022, uh, he was worth a million dollars. But this year, in February, he's um worth eight hundred million. Eight hundred oh, yeah, million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So give nice, some I'm gonna give you a quick timeline, really quick. This is coming from uh, NPR. Um, by the way, today's show brought to you by GhostBed.com forward slash Wolfpack, FactorMeals.com forward slash Wolfpack five zero, and the Wellness Company promo code Wolfpack. Uh, ad reads later on. 1990, Combs starts his music industry career as an intern at Uptown Records. Uh, 1991, he had a lawsuit. Combs and the R&B singer Aaron Hall allegedly sexually assault an unnamed victim and friend oh, after a music Jesus. event. This is when he's pretty much a nobody. Right. Then beat her several days later when confronted. Now, remember the old P. Diddy thing where he blew up the dude's car? And videotapes. Oh, so, hold on. Then we got 1991, a lawsuit. Combs allegedly drugs and assault, sexually assaults, and videotapes 19-year-old Joy Dickerson after going on a date with him. In 93, after he was fired from his duties at Uptown Records, Combs starts his own label, Bad Boy Records. 
Uh, the label grows in popularity, notoriety over the course of the decade, breaking the careers of Craig Mack, Torres B.I.G., Mace, Locks, Faith Evans, and more. 96, Combs found guilty of criminal mischief for threatening a photographer with a gun. In 98, Combs starts throwing his annual Hamptons all-white parties that come to be known as so lavish and exclusive, he earns the rep of being a modern-day Gatsby. Guests range from music industry execs, so that's when he's kind of having those like sex party orgy mm -hmm. type things that, that people allege he did. April 16th, 99, Combs is arrested and charged with two felonies, second-degree assault, criminal mischief, and beating of record executive Stephen Stout, who says Combs and two bodyguards beat him with their fists, a telephone, a champagne bottle, and a chair. Uh, Combs uh, apologized. Stout asked for the charges to be dismissed, and he reportedly paid out $500,000. The assault charges dropped. Combs pleads guilty to a lesser charge of harassment. All right. December 99, Combs, along with his girlfriend Jennifer Lopez and rapper Cheyenne, are arrested in relation to a shooting at a club in New York. Now, I didn't know that him and J-Lo were in, involved mm, in a shooting. It's Cheyenne or Shine? Shine. Shine. It's, yeah, it's shine. shine. My bad. I'm Shine. I'm sorry. You know, like, that was very white of me. I'm sorry. Um, shine are arrested in relation to a shooting at a nightclub. I didn't know that. We'll have to talk about that in a second. Uh, the first season of Making the Band airs on MTV in 2000. 20, 2001, he's got another assault charge. 2003... Uh, gang raped an unnamed 17 year old victim in his Manhattan recording studio. I remember that. But you, but hmm? Basically, what you're going down is you see how long it goes all the way back to 90, 91. Right when he wasn't a nobody, years, but he was up and coming. When he got the Craig Mack, Notorious B.I.G., Faith Evans, when he got those artists and they all blew up at the same time, he started, of course, his money started getting longer. Right. Uh, he started branching out. Sean John clothing line. Right, uh, right, they're right, going right. Ciroc, the Ciroc, the yeah. alcohol, all yeah. that stuff. So you know, when you look at his net worth, and yeah, he, but I mean, a lot of these things he's guilty of. Like he's already yeah. pleaded guilty and paid out. Well, see, that's what exactly the money. He got the money because not one of those have you said how much time he served. Right, none, none. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, nothing. You know what I'm saying? But he said something about an assault on a guy. I mean, he said yeah, him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, so Vin yeah, here's he 2006. Uh, Ventura signed 10, 10 album deal with Bad Boy Entertainment. Her debut single, Me and You, is released. According to a November 2023, Combs' vicious cycle of abuse begins here. Ventura alleges years of physical, psychological, and mutual abuse. Now, this is the one that he blows up the car. Claims Combs forced her to purchase and take illegal drugs like cocaine, ketamine, ecstasy. He filmed her uh, as he forced her to participate in sex with male sex workers in multiple cities for his own voyeuristic pleasure and a practice he called freak-offs, and that he beat her on many occasions in retaliation for talking to other men, often with witnesses present. 2007, Combs becomes marketing ambassador and sto stakeholder of Ciroc. Uh, vodka by beverage maker... Diego sales of the vodka skyrocket, blah blah blah. Oh, uh, yeah, 2007, he's got a big case. 2010, another big case again. He just 2012, never been held 13. accountable because of the money he, he made, the people who he, I mean, I mean that grew as, yeah. as big time celebrities. I mean, again, it's just like with, with the um. <laughs> with uh what's his name r kelly oh, r but see r kelly was not as smart he wanted a, a smart guy he he didn't know how you know what i'm saying he figured okay i'm a singer i'm gonna sing oh yeah you know it just they let it go so long everybody's wondering he's gonna get caught one day one day well, you know what happened? You think, though. it took all this long from 1990 to whenever r kelly got convicted it took that long. long People, yeah, it went over their heads. Money, again, that money. Them parents won't say nothing as long as that money was coming in. Yeah. And when he got broke and money won't coming in, then they wanted to start talking and complaining. Because he came out <laughs> with a song, um, He Saved Me or something. You know, mm -hmm. he had like a whole, his music changed, kind of like he was uh, leaning towards God. Yeah, he was good, yeah. yeah. But see, yeah, again, so again, I used to always joke about it. I'd be like, man, R. Kelly go out there and fuck with these 15-year-old women and everybody get in the uproar and then he come out with, I believe I can fly. Yeah. You know, he a, a hit song and it'll take 
everybody mind off of him fucking well, some I've little girl. I've always said that about Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you know what, that's Michael, a lot of fucked to, up to allegations about Michael Jackson. I really believe Michael. His childhood was robbed. He was robbed sure, from his childhood yeah, because I, his dad was yeah, ruthless. He was he was he was a pe- tough on him, and he, he you know had his boys practicing. And when they weren't practicing music, they was doing gigs on school nights and right. stuff. So he was robbed of his childhood. When a dude, you know, when a kid that no, gonna make a friend that. of a rat in the house and right. call him Ben and then yeah. write a song about it. Yeah. He's fucked up. Right. But I don't think he got fucked up from that. I think he was sexually traumatized. I think he has the same problem that Corey Feldman has. I think he has the same problem that Britney Spears industry. has. In the industry. I think the I, industry yeah. fucked him. Yeah. And I think that, that it, you know, cause Corey Feldman is, is that, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Like he's batshit crazy and yeah. very sexually, you know, but w- they say when you're sexually traumatized, mm. whatever age you were traumatized at, you almost stay in that age forever. And, um, I would, and so I have no doubt in my mind, but here, but I will also I say this. Barry I've, Gordy, Barry Gordy. I say this though, oh, okay. your traumas as a child end when you become an adult and when you take the traumas of your childhood into your adulthood mm-hmm. as crimes you're now a, a you're, you're a predator you're a victim until you're 18 in my eyes once mm-hmm. you turn 18 you don't get to be a victim anymore you can't go and turn that on to somebody else I don't, it sucks I, it's sad i don't know i don't know i believe if it's not handled if it's not addressed then it can linger on until your adult years. No, it does. It does linger on. But what I'm saying is you're held accountable regardless. I don't care what happened to you as a I, kid. I'll give you an example. Once you turn 18, you're held accountable I, I give you an for example. your actions going forward. I give you an example. So if you were diddled and then you diddle somebody at 18, right. you're you're a predator now. Right. Can I say something before you say that? Yeah. So why would you want to diddle somebody if you were diddle and you diddle somebody unless you thought it was okay for them to diddle well, because you? I, it's probably, I mean, I don't know because I wasn't diddled as a child, right. but I know that like sexual traumas and everything mm-hmm. often leach out. Uh, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist or a doctor either, but I mean, there's enough cases that we've even covered on true crime over the last couple of years that people who endure sexual traumas or abuse often go on to be abusers themselves. Maybe it's because that's all they know and that's all they see. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it was okay at the time maybe for them to do it to somebody else. Yeah. I mean, okay. You, you know, or, or maybe, you know, maybe if they feel like their dad got away with it or, or their uncle or, or their pastor got away with it, then maybe then like, you know, maybe, maybe they, I don't know. I, I, I like I said, I mean, I'm not a to me, I, I think it's just like anything. It's just like, if you get a scratch, you get a, a big, uh, a bite, a dog bites you in your ass yeah, and, and you don't get it fixed. You don't, you know, take care of it. Yeah. Patch that wound up, you know, get your some alcohol disinfect. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to get infected. It's right, going to get right, bad. Right. I think it's the same way. I think, I mean, I'll give an example, a personal one. I have a cousin who witnessed his dad beat his mom okay. for all his life up until he was 18. And then at 18, his ass was abusing women. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and this is, and I had, all, I, I didn't arrest him, but I was one of the officers who came there uh, when he done kicked in the girl door and beat her ass. And then when she said his name, I'm looking like, oh, damn, that's my cousin. You know, I let the other officers know. And, you know, uh, I had to get out of her right. presence. Didn't want her to know, oh, the police is his cousin, you know. But when they finally got him, he had to go to the hospital. You know, I don't know if they whooped his ass or he was on drugs or whatever. But I went to go visit him and he busting out crying. I'm like, man, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you putting your hands on women? And he said, man, you know how my daddy was. What you got to bring? Unkin for it. He was like, I grew up watching him put his hands on my mom yeah, all I mean, them years you, and blah blah blah. So now he would, doing it. Right. It was, you, evidently they thought it was okay, or that's what they were sure. So if not, you wouldn't do that. But like right. that's my but like that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think you know, for me personally, I think Michael Jackson was was personally abused, sexually traumatized as a child, most like these Nickelodeon stars we're gonna talk about here shortly. Uh, however, it does not excuse you from your behaviors as an adult. It's sad, I can empathize with it. But no, you get to go to jail. I think you get to go. You get to be punished for it. Like said, and no. if they don't get help for it, then right. I think it would, like you say, it yeah. will linger on until the. And we're going to see no that. I mean, well, and so, like when you see Amanda Bynes, and you just so I had said when Mike when when Amanda Bynes went down her whole thing after she went through Max Magazine. Um, which I feel terrible, terrible about uh, because I bought that Max magazine and thought it was cool as shit. Um, you know, this Nickelodeon star that I grew up with was now going into Max magazine. I just, in my twenties, I thought that was really cool. Um, 
I see now in my forties, how damaged of a human being she was that she went to Maxim. Uh, and, and, and now that I see her, I have been saying since this whole podcast, since she started her own podcast, I was like, that girl was sexually traumatized. She was sexually, uh, brutalized and the tweets that she puts out, the tweets that she's put out dead. Like if you'll, if you'll over the next five or six minutes, well, I'll go back to it, but pull, cause we're going to the Nickelodeon stuff. Anyway, pull out some of those, uh, Amanda Bynes, Facebook posts and tweets that she used to put out about getting fucked by her boss and things like that. So, I mean, it looks like it's true. Let me ask you this. What do you think about porno stars? Do you think that they became porno stars because they were fucked when they was kids and I think a lot of them. and all of them? I think a lot of them. Or, you know, or some kind of abuse, some kind of like maybe it was overbearing parents. Um, you know, maybe you know, I know people who have had really strict parents mm -hmm. when they were growing up and their parents meant very well, but were very, very strict. And then all of their family members, there's something that like, they're all very like yeah. detached from the parents. They went through like these very weird, you know, these yeah. very weird 20 somethings, you know, where they had to find themselves and like kind of recreate yeah. their own identity. So I, I just think there are traumas. It gotta Maybe be not because I mean, cause who grew up, and be like, what you want to be, little girl, when you grow up? I want to be a porn star. You know, Debbie does Dallas. Or, you know, well, I mean, we can even go into it with this like, Laverne what? chick um, that we're going to talk about the payout of $500,000 who, you know, somehow, you know, gets wrapped up in these sexual deviancies with her um, police department. And her husband was, you know, allegedly in on it. And they were swingers and things like that. You know, was she sexually traumatized as a child? Like, what brought it out was... What kind of family upbringing did she have that letter to that? And we can talk about that here shortly. Go ahead, Deadleg. Bring up those texts. Read them out for us. Let me finish this Tootsie Roll that I popped in my mouth so unprofessionally. Uh, I don't know that I could read these out loud, but they are. This is read allegedly. Them out to stop. Read them. Read them. If you want to fuck men, that's fine. That absorbs. Them. But when you sexually abuse, assault, harass these men, you must face justice. White privilege at his best. John Travolta is a sexual monster. It bothers me that John Travolta is not being treated as Bill Cosby. John Travolta is a pervert. I know this. Uh, I love how upset people are getting over my life. You should get one. My parents are the ones tweeting on Amanda Bynes, deleting this account. Please pray for me, my freedom, and chance to have control over my finances. This is me. I'm authentic, often imitated, but never duplicated. I refuse to be silenced. My friends know how to reach me. So this is an so, account that she had that when her other account was allegedly taken over by her parents. So, so that, that was from her. She said that about John Travolta. Yeah. That's from her account. But now I read one from one of her accounts that said, um, like my boss, you know, like something about having an abortion. At, can you find the one where she tweeted about having an abortion at like 13 or something like that? I don't want to misspeak. There was a lot in that documentary and I've gone down a big rabbit hole in the last four or five days. And there was a bunch of characters in that documentary. So I just, I don't want to misspeak so much. Um, so I'll just stop there until you, until you I, find it. And if you don't find it, that's okay. Then maybe, it, then maybe I was wrong. Man, a lot of this stuff that we talk about, if it's dealing with kids, I blame the parents. Okay. No ifs, ands, or buts. It's the parents. Because yeah. by law. Wait, are we in, jumping into the Nickelodeon thing now? Well, this is also, overall. This is for all of it. Okay. If yeah, it's, yeah. if if the victim is a youth, if they're under the age of eighteen, it, the parents should be held responsible. Well, let me ask you this: If your dog gets out mm -hmm. of your house, let's say your dog, and not your dog, I don't even know if you have a yeah, dog. Let's just dog. pretend you got I a dog. dog. You got a dog. Margaret comes to your house. She opens the door. Dog runs out, bites the neighbor. Whose fault is it? It's mine. It's yours, right? Yeah. So I don't see how it's so hard for parents not to, like, that's how I see, like, you can come up with excuses all day. Well, Margaret opened the door and I didn't even know she was coming over. Doesn't matter. You raised a dog. Right. You You're brought right. a dog into this world. You opted not to train your right. dog. Whatever. Exactly. Whatever the things is, it's at the end of the day, extreme ownership, I guess, if you want to be cliche, it's extreme ownership. It's your dog. It's your responsibility. Right. Because right. the words was used, fault and responsibility. I see it is his responsibility. But it's my fault that I opened the door. 
I mean, I get I it. Be a but either way, I, you need I it, get it. Him. But no, like at the end of the day, I still think he holds full yeah. because then it's, don't own yeah. a dog that's yeah. gonna run out and go bite somebody and not pay to go get it trained. I mean, how many? And I don't know. I'm saying you, but no, like, right. how much money do you spend on your comedy career? How I much mean, money do you spend in travel? You know, some would argue, or I think a lot of the courts I'm, would argue. I'm, it's just like at a restaurant, you order some food and you get food poison. You ain't gonna sue the cook. It's gonna be that establishment who owned that restaurant is gonna be the one that's responsible for your meal. I think right. that's you know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so like I, I agree with you on this one. And if we're jumping into the Nickelodeon thing really quick, um, I really would suggest that you go to ghostbed.com forward slash wolfpack right now and find you a mattress that fits you. These are beds made in the good old USA. Because after this little segment, you're going to need something more than just that lousy bed and pillow that you've been sleeping on forever because it's going to be hard to sleep after this, especially if you watch that documentary, however many episodes it was that for or that series was, uh, you're going to need a little extra boost to go to sleep. Uh, and that's why we're proud to partner with uh, ghostbed.com. Always say mental wellness starts with a, a good night's sleep. Uh, ghostbed.com forward slash Wolfpack, 50% off for first responders across the board. Um, again, went down to Ghostbed facility, walked through the facility, got to feel these beds with my own hands, see the research lab. I even went to their customer service department, which is separate from everything else. Uh, just wonderful people who absolutely love and adore first responders. And so when they gave us a promo code for 50% off and I had a conversation with him. I was like, look, dude, there's a lot of people in here that aren't first responders that listen. It's a podcast. It's not like it just goes out to cops. It's not like a cop radio station. And he said it would be too difficult for us to give, you know, we would have to like get their IDs and their badge numbers. If they're supporters of your show, they're supporters of law enforcement. That's good enough for us. Let's blanket this bad boy. Let's go for it. Ghostbed.com forward slash Wolfpack. 50% off across the board. That's their pillow, their cooling sheets, their adjustable bases. They've got a uh, 0% down, 0% financing right now. And that's if you have P Diddy credit. Um, head over to ghostbed.com forward slash Wolfpack and get you 50% off to the also wellness company. End of days are coming. April 8th is approaching very fast. Some of you guys are believers in this Haley's Comet mm. Eclipse thing that's mm. coming through and all the wax of which we're going to cover next week because that's closer to the 8th. We're going to cover it next week about like what cities is it really crossing over? Is it crossing over these Ninevehs and Salem's? And what does the Bible actually say? We'll break it down on the show and have some fun with this. Uh, however, if it is the end of days, or we're going to have this rolling blackout. You're going to want to have the wellness company pre-prescribed meds for whatever. Listen, you're going on a trip get you and you're you're in the wellness company you get that tell a doctor gonna give you your malaria pills for your trip they're gonna give you all the pre-prescribed medicines right to your door this is your survival medic medicine prescription kits they have survival kits for travel they've got just overall for like the next pandemic ivermectin uh your z packs your monochloral antibodies and we're talking this is Dr. McCullough from the Joe Rogan show, one of the most important podcast episodes in the history of man was that episode that came out, I believe on like January 1st or January 3rd. And it was so, it, it, it hit the, the industry so bad that they had to draw up all that Joe Rogan inward stuff to try to slander him because that was literally the most important podcast of all time. I think truly in my heart. And if you really want to have a good grasp on what COVID was or, or is, uh, that was the episode to find it on. That was Dr. McCullough from the, uh, the, the CDC or what, you know, go listen to the other, but anyway, he's in on this project with Dr. Drew head over to the wellness company, use that promo code Wolfpack, get your Timerson off. Um, and it's a good peace of mind. We also have last rad read for the night factor meals.com. Uh, Good health. Health starts with a good night's sleep. Also starts with a good diet. If you want to get jacked like I'm getting, listen, I'm 207 pounds. That's the first time I've been under 207 pounds since I left the police department. I've lost uh, about 18 pounds since December. Um, I'm up on that factor meals, but listen, I'm going with the protein heavy because this is meal planning. You can do calorie conscious. You want to lose weight protein heavy. If you want to get, you know, jacked and ripped, uh, you can, uh, which I'm not jacked and ripped, but um, I, my goal is to get there. You got titties. I got titties. I just the other day said I had a little bit of back fat kind of, uh, you know, kind of hit me in the feels. But uh, at the end of the day, I've got five kids and a wife, so I don't really care. You know? um, but anyway, uh, I just wanted to help me with my jujitsu. 
Uh, <laughs> but anyway, oh. Factor Meals, they got the breakfast shake. So if you're on the go, but as a first responder, meal planning is, is time consuming. That's time you could have been court prepping. It's time you could have been hitting the gym, going to jujitsu, getting your shooting, uh, shooting practice, your dry fires in. Head over to factormeals.com. Use that promo code Wolfpack50 for 50% off. Um, head over there right now and go ahead and start. Don't wait till next year and have like a New Year's resolution. Start right now. Get ready for the summer. What do you wait? What are you waiting on? Get jacked like me. Look at December, January, February, March. Three. There's about 90 days. I'm down 18 pounds. I feel good. Everybody's saying I look great. Everybody. I mean, paparazzi just. Yeah, it's looking great, but I, I was noticing you've only breathed like maybe three times. Yeah. Since you've been talking. I don't I need thought, to breathe. That's why his face breathes. I, 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 I don't need to breathe. Yeah, but he's like, yeah. he's like, like he got it. I, see, I do it fast because I want the arteries to go by fast. I got you. But I got to get a lot of information out. Uh, cause I can't short them. I can't shortcut them. Than me. Dude, no way. No, no, no at least no, I no. breathe. No, I breathe. I pause. No, no, no. <laughs> I breathe. I breathe through my anus and exhale <laughs> through my mouth. Um, <laughs> anyway, head over to factormeals.com promo code Wolfpack five zero. Get you 50% off. Okay. Let's get into the Nickelodeon thing. Then, uh, this is, uh, what's the name of it that we just watched? It's called quiet on set. Quiet on set. I'm with you on this one. What you're referring to with the parents being at fault yeah, is in the second episode, third episode, yeah. the woman says that she received dick pics from the producer on email for her daughter. Her daughter the saw daughter. this. She did not call the police. The mother did not call the police because she felt like a bad mom for allowing her daughter to be in that situation. So you have now publicly admitted on a documentary that it is literally all about you and what somebody else is going to think about you. And she's still saying this with conviction as if she did the right thing to which I say, go fuck yourself. Yes, you were a bad mom and tell everybody that you were a bad mom and tell yourself you were a bad mom she did in that she, moment. She removed her child from that. She, she did do that part. But for us telling them okay. so the other kids won't have to go through that, oh, keep right. She didn't, right? Right. And you're a bad person. You, you want, and here's the problem with these people: they want fame so bad, they will sell their souls so quickly. I've been saying this. I've seen this with my kids personally, and I'm not going to go down that route. That's why I won't allow these energy drink sponsors to try to sponsor my child. <clears throat> um. Everything that tries to sponsor my kid, I try to dive in there and see what's going on before I allow my kid to rep it. Right. And some of this stuff is questionable, but it's not questionable to, to my morals or my standards. But I have a I have a limit. And I know where that limit I, I like I know where my line is. And if a company tries to cross the line, I've already bailed out on my kids' podcasts. Gromit Vomit was doing great, right? Ryan mm -hmm. Sheckler took my kids to Camp Woodward, Pennsylvania. My kid, they, they all got to, these kids got to meet Bam Margera. These kids got to meet all these pro servers. It was going great, but you know what happens, right? These money, the money starts to come in. Then they start coming up with these contracts. You shall do this. You shall be at this right, event. Right. You shall do this. You know, I was taking my kids to a concert. They, uh, listen, I, I don't have anything against Guar. Right. I listened to him as Guar, but was it good for me to take my children to a Guar right. concert? <laughs> you know, but in the moment I was like, well, you know, these sponsors want him to go, you know, like we'll just, you know, but it was, it was a bad move. I'm willing to call myself out on that too. Like I, I, I probably shouldn't have done it just to help my kids. And so we've gotten, we've kind of cut ties with the podcast. Um, I didn't take my ball and go home. I let the other parents like do their thing. Um, but with my kids growing in their, you know, they're, they're phenomenal skateboarders at such an early age. I mean, my son today, you can go on his Instagram. It's Duke Tansy. You can go on to August Tansy or Elgin Tansy or Tansy fam and watch all of their videos. But I mean, he just kick flipped this seven stair today. It was, you know, they went bull riding. They rode like yeah, real yeah, rodeo yeah. bulls. Yeah, but nice. So here's the thing though. It's like, I know that social media, they need it to get where they want to go. Right. And, and to follow their dreams. But like you said, though, there should be some limitations. If the parents is, the parents need to be that manager, they yes. need to guide them. Yes. They need to be that buffer between a professional agent and the child. Because yeah. you can slick talk kids and, 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 and shine a turd up. And they would think it's it smelled lovely because you done shined it up. You done shined I'll it up. I'll go one step further. If you're going to manage your kids as a parent, 
then you need to go find a real friend that's already really successful. A Mike the Cop, a Nick Palmashano. You need to find somebody else. And then you need to find another person that's going to hold you accountable. You need to find you a dead leg or a, you know, uh, a John Bates or, or, or so you need to find, you know, I've surrounded myself with, with people of good moral character. I got a Navy SEAL buddy actually who called me about the Guar thing. He was like, bro, you think it was good for your kids to go to a Guar concert? Like, I get it. It's cool. Like, I'm not trying to take away from it, but like, you think that's healthy for your kids to go see? I was like, well, to be fair, they didn't, I didn't, we didn't stay. Like we did the behind the scenes. We got some clips inside the th thing. They did the crowd surfing and then we bounced before all the, the real crazy shit happened. He's like, yeah, but like, what do you think the other kids are going to think? And he was right. You know, I can argue with them all I want. So what I would say is like, if you're going to manage your child into some kind of s social media fame, one, you have to manage it. And by manage it, you have to be in it. Right. Like you got to see who these people are that are messaging your child. But you know, on this Nickelodeon thing, they were talking about closed sets to the parents. Yeah, what? Well, see, yeah. I'll, I'll give you an example in the comedy world. I had a kid, I knew a kid who was real funny, 14 years old. Why yeah. I, I, but I, you don't know. Oh, <laughs> he, he won't from around here. Don't worry. I mean, don't worry. But he don't worry, but, you but he was so he was funny, but his dad, dad wanted a comedian, but his mom and dad was like, I want to put him in the club and let him, you know, go up, go up. And, and it was like an open mic thing. Right. And he said, but I'm going to have my son stay on the outside until it's his time. When it's his oh. time, he come in there, get on stage, do his jokes, mm. and then he leaves. Right. Good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He won't in there to hear other comedians do their vulgar set. Mm -hmm. He won't in there to see the, the bar, people getting mm -hmm. alcohol and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. yeah, but he yeah. managed him. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, and the kid is real good and he still wants to be a comedian. But up until the time he's 18, and have say so in it. His parents is managing him and doing, you know, his these look. Hollywood parents. They don't do that. A lot of them don't do you that. You know, they were saying on this Hollywood set, and I and I know it because it takes discipline. And most people don't have discipline. But I have met, you know, we've all met the soccer mom, right? That's the pageant mom. Mm -hmm. You know, we've all met that athletic, yeah. that that child who mediocre, you know, yeah. is is halfway decent. But their parents are looking for that next sponsor. They're cutthroat. They're going to burn bridges. They're going to go after me. They're going to talk behind people's back. Listen, man, last year with, with the kids competing, we took a lot of time off competing because last year I felt like I was fighting all those parents. Like I was like, I'm not going to be one of those. But then me fighting those parents made me join allies with other parents. And it's not healthy, man. It's not healthy to push your kids like that. Luckily, I was good enough to not get my kids involved. So my kids don't, don't even know, you know? Um, but you know, I was, I was, uh, I, I was present for, for two adults, dads fighting at a contest. It was very embarrassing, you know, for them. And, um, I just was like, you know what? Everybody wants to be famous these days. And when you look at this Nickelodeon thing, it probably wasn't too far different there, but you noticed the theme here was that most of the, the, the parents were divorced. And it was one parent trying to go all in with this child and they didn't have any boundaries. And if you watch this documentary, and I encourage all of you to go watch it, uh, quiet on the set, you know, you hear them saying that one part of the, the, the documentary where she was like, well, if you just spoke up, you know, that would be it. That'd be the end of your career. So you just kind of well, dealt with it. And, and, and I, you know, don't, want to throw the race card in there but we talked about it before we was like oh, yeah and even the, the, the black kid, mom, yeah he was tolerated. like the dude even said he said i felt like i was the token because i was yeah. the only black up there and then i was the black male the only black male and then it was a black female and they was treated a little different the old boy said even the, the guy that was the sexual predator kind of side at him and he was real cautious with him you know well, the, and, and, and you know what? Looking back at it now on the documentary, he's the one that had the mom. Yeah, his and mom. And he even said, though, if you caught it, <laughs> yeah. in a few scenes later, he says, you know, I think that it was more or less they let us go because of the way my mom. Yeah. Was da -da -da -da. But here we go. If you're a sexual predator and you got a mom that's asking a bunch of questions and say, uh uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Sally, Jesse, and. Raphael, uh, <laughs> why, we're not going to tolerate our kids going on to a closed set. Why right. do they need a closed set with no parents? Right. What would be the purpose of that? And they'd be like, mm -hmm, yeah, why? And they're like, okay, well, that bitch has got to go because I can't diddle these kids. Right. Is she gonna, if she's going to be riling everybody up, you know, but yeah, you're right. So like they got rid of 
the, the, black, the yeah. only mom that gave a fuck. And exactly. here's that's where my line is. So, uh, you know, my on Tansy fam, it says like Christian family, you know, and I literally had somebody um, that was helping us uh, because we, 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 we've got photo shoots that we're doing now almost like weekly for sponsors and things like that. And, you know, they, they're on a, a skateboarding team, which is great. And you know, there's just some other things that they're working on. And I don't listen. I don't know if my kids will ever be that good, but they're they are the best at their age on the East coast. They're in the top 20 on the East coast skateboarding under 11 years old. There's just nobody else out there. Um, and so they're getting a lot of great opportunities. And one guy told me, he's like, Hey man, I don't know if I would put Christian family up there because you know, not everybody aligns with that. I said, well, do you, do you say that to the guy that has pronouns? Cause I would argue that's the same shit. So you know what I mean? Out. Like, how about this? I don't want my kids to rep any brand that has a problem with them being Christians because they are going to be, they are going to abide by Christian morals and values to the best of their abilities first before they are going to do anything else. And so like, if we have something that's, you know, that doesn't fall in those, you know, like if uh, nicotine I mean, or my, vape or, yeah, or yeah. Uh, it's you know, not energy like they, drinks. You yeah. Know? It's not like they out there, you know, promoting vulgar stuff. Right. You, you know, you know what I'm saying? You, but you know, which is hard though, too, because it's like, we're comedians, right? Right. So it's like, you know, sometimes, and, and that was the hard part about that Nickelodeon thing. Right. Like some of that stuff was vulgar. Right. And inappropriate. But it was fun. But I also get that you're trying to write a comedy. And so some things do right. need to be a little bit vulgar, but the glory hole, that's too far. I give you. You know what I, I mean? You, like, I give you. I the glory you, hole I scene you, was too far. I give you, uh, if you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. It's Snoop Dogg. He has a yeah. movie out I, so called Underdog or something. Underdogs. Is that a movie Underdogs. or a series? It's a movie. It's a movie. It's a movie. It's, it's, a movie. it's, it's, movie. it's, it's good. Okay, I'll watch it. It's and it's reality. Should my kids watch it? It ain't on, uh, not that it's a lot of profanity. If they're used to hearing, it. yeah, I think yeah. so. It, if your if your kids are used to hearing yeah. adult <laughs> profanity, because right. that's what it was. It was, yeah. and the kids were cussing. Yeah, yeah, sure. But yeah, see, yeah, yeah, to yeah. me, my kids, because you know, I worked as a school resource officer in school, middle and high school. Kids cuss. I've been around and hear kids cuss. They might didn't cuss at me, but in that conversation, I'm hearing them. I'm like, boy, these are some little Richard Pryor really running around here. They just cussing their ass it's, off. It has a, like, but a real mo good moral. Edit. Right, but but Snoop talked to them kids like they were adults, you know. Well, you know, and I, I talk, you know, listen, and I get shit on for this all the time. Um, that same Navy SEAL guy, uh, he's 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 gotten mad at me for for my foul language, but I'm not, I'm not going to drop the foul language. Um, you know, if God comes to me and, and, and wants to work that out or make me feel convicted, go for it. But, uh, I, I feel like those are just words. Right. That you, I mean, you, make, you, you empower your words. Yeah. I don't empower. I don't think any words are off the table. There's, there's societies and cultures out there. Swearing didn't, in, in, it didn't exist in the Bible. As far as I know, let's see, show me something that shows me. I mean, they didn't have it, bad it, words. It, right. 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 But is it, uh, as far as swear, they I think I swear talk, says, but, as far as like, Swearing on it's, t it's like but telling it's, you to swear on something. It's like, not swearing in curse words. Right, right. Like that's not what they mean by no, it in the, no. in the Bible. So, but like you know, I mean, I get the crass talk argument, and I'm not saying that it's great. But you know, I can tell my kid. I'll give you a great example. We went skateboarding around downtown Raleigh, mm -hmm. and I told them. Hey, we're going to be on the sidewalks. Y'all aren't in school because you're homeschooled. People aren't going to like that you're on the sidewalks. Whenever somebody comes, the three of you need to pick a side and get to it and mm -hmm. let that person pass. So they don't think you're just some kind of skater punks. Well, it seemed like the first five people that walked by, I was like, get on the side, the other side, everybody pick a side. So I was like, huddle up for now. on, We're going to move to the right side, wherever we're at. It's going to be the right side. Cause y'all are having a hard time figuring out which side to go to. And, and I can't have <laughs> one on one side and two on the other side. Right. So for now on, everybody go to the right side. So we go about five more people, you know, where I'm like, everybody get to the right side, your other right. But, uh, you know, <laughs> And it's just getting ridiculous. Well, we start, they kind of start figuring it out and we get around to the other side of Raleigh. We're almost done. We've been doing this for about an hour and a half, two hours at this point. And this gentleman's walking by. He's already having a bad day. I can already tell that he's got to stick up his ass. So I'm like, I'm going to get ahead of this. Mm. He are, He's already looking at these kids like, what the fuck are they doing on the sidewalk? And right. he's going to say some shit. So I'm going to get ahead of it. And I'm like, but wait, he's way out. I'm like, boys, get to the side. Two of the boys get to the side. 
one of them starts drifting back out. So now I got two in the middle, one on the side. And I'm like, get on the side of the road. Now the guy's getting closer. The other one gets to the side. Now I got one in the middle. Then my oldest son's like, fuck it. He's on the other side. Let's both <laughs> move to the other side. So at least we're all on the same side. Right. So he's got, cro- they're just, they're, but they're all up in the fucking sidewalk at this point. So I go, stop. Get the fuck off the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. And they're like, and the dude was like, hey, man, you ain't got to talk to those kids that way. It ain't got to be like that. It's just a sidewalk. You were gonna say something. I'm like, bitch, you were going to say something regardless, <laughs> motherfucker. But hey, that's fine. But you know what? I said a thousand times, and we right. talked about it. Sometimes you just got to tell these kids and that's to true. fucking and, and, get and off see, the fucking see, sidewalk. Me, me, by them being your kids, I would have been like, man, fuck you. They my kids. God dang it. I, well, I'm I not going to start shit in front of my kids. I, I, I just not, he, not I, 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 I would have said they my kids. They know they know me. They're my kids. Fuck you. Keep your ass a walker. Next time I let bring your ass over. Right. I know. I yeah, yeah, I know. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I keep walking. So, you know, listen, you know, the swearing thing. And um, but you know, sometimes I feel like it, when you talk to a kid, I think people baby their kids way too fucking much. Like oh, yeah. I, I think people hold their kids back from their potential. I mean, these kids back in the old days were were building things and, and working on high rises at eleven and twelve years old. Doing now that, no, we got America. sixteen year olds that can't change their fucking oil. So, you know, um I'm trying to bring back that whole uh you know, so I've tried to give my kids tons more for him, but I talk to them more or less I, like they're adults. But I also coddled them as children. And, and it's see, a fine my, like my nephew, my nephew just this morning, he five years old. He'll be six in June, June first. And my sister was talking and she called me. And she was like, hey, she was on her way coming in from work. She was like, hey, can you wake him up and tell him go ahead and start getting dressed? You know, um, his his shirt there, you know, it's, it's all laid out. I said, okay. So I tell him, and uh, I said, hey, I said, Jace, you got your clothes on? Yes, sir. All kind. I said, you got your socks on? Yes, I'm putting my wife beater on right now. I said, he's five years old. What the fuck you know about a wife beater? And when my sister came home, I was like, hey, do you, what, what, what did he know about a wife beater? He said he put on his wife beater. She said, that's why on that car. I said, you know, he's five years old. Yeah, listen, that, all my kids call right? a wife beater. I mean, what else do you call it? Every time you see a man that beats his wife, excuse me, most people yeah, yeah. your wife have on, on TV. Yeah, right, like right, right. Oh, I know that. But. I always would think of like Black Snake Moan, where what's yeah. his wearing the wife beater. <laughs> but it was but. just funny. They hear him say that, yeah, That's I'm putting cool. on my wife beater right now. I'm like, so five years old. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, I mean, go and watch this whole Nickelodeon thing. I think it's a discussion worth having, at least with your own family. Um, yeah, he said, un- wait, it's called something different? Well, yes, <laughs> Maybe like a tank, an undershirt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, like, you know, but he, listen, even if your kids aren't on social media or whatever, you got to have conversations with your kids about what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. Um, what you're willing to do for your baseball team, what you're willing to do for your soccer team, and, and to get your kids, you know, like if you're giving up that pussy as a mom to the coach just so you can get your kid to play, I mean, you're kind of a piece of shit. Um, and you should probably do better. But anyway, uh, and by the way, I know somebody that was doing that. So she was like, I really don't want to bang them, but I also want my kids to start. And I was like, yo, what? Uh, anyway, bizarre stuff there. Um, let's jump over really quick to Laverne. Uh, Miss Laverne, as you guys know her, or as we've been calling her, uh, th- this is coming from News Channel 5 Nashville. This is this this whole case happened out of NBC. Um, I mean, out of Tennessee. This is uh, where the uh, Laverne officer um, had sex with many of her coworkers, most of them being... Uh, most of them being supervisors. The city of Laverne settled in a civil lawsuit uh, filed by former police officer Megan Hall in connection with the police department's sex scandal. Hall's attorney said that he was pleased with the $500,000 settlement. The disturbing details came from not one, but two investigations lasting uh, last year, finding evidence of sexual activity between Hall and other officers, which, by the way, is not a crime, within the department, and it led to the federal civil rights lawsuit, one which the city settled last week. Are you satisfied with the settlement? Absolutely, her her attorney said. This was her decision. She wanted to put this in the past and move forward with her life. I'm sorry. Um, You're not a victim. You broke up marriages. You seduced dudes. Dudes seduced you. 
I don't give a, I don't care what their rank is or what their structure is. You knew exactly what you were doing. You gave up that pussy and now you're getting paid $500,000. Like just take it on the shoulder. You're kind of a whore. You're kind of a slut. Just own that. You but, did some slutty but, shit. But, but who you, cares? But you know the thing it's is. It's 2023. Nobody gives a fuck. 2024. I'm going to tell you. Well, it was 2023 when I had I'm going to tell you what I was told. When at my swearing in day on my first day on the job as a police, what did they say? Don't touch that. Don't, no, no, I don't even do that. <laughs> Stay away from the nurses. Coming, you got to think. I came. I basically transitioned from the military. I, I gave up, put up, took off one uniform and put on the other one and kept it moving. I didn't have no lag or nothing. So and and I was still staying on a military post when when I did my transition from military full time right, army right. going into law enforcement and. That uniform, that badge, yeah. power. Yeah. And one guy, he told me this, and I never forget it. He said, "That put that badge, will get you pussy, and that pussy will take your badge." Mm. Ooh, yeah. yeah, that was tight. Yeah, yeah. And and I always, when I was thinking what he was saying, until you know, you start hearing these stories, you be like, dude, you know, he done lost his badge mm. over some getting out there sleeping with other women, married women, or coworkers, yeah. wives, or whatever, you know, cheating yeah. on his wives or whatever, and. The badge will draw women to you, just like the military uniform. Yeah, but we've seen it. it we've seen it time time. You get any kind of girl that kind of puts out in the department, and all the dudes get fucking thirsty. But she's thirsty too. That's what starts it. You know, when a girl I mean, bangs two or three dudes in the department, dudes start shooting that shot. But that's human needs, though. That that's that's that. It's a lot of people. It's 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 sec, it's not having any sexual discipline. Now, listen, I tell my wife all the time, I could be a whore. I'm I'm probably a whore at heart. Like there are lots of things that I see, you and I would like. Your wife. I would, She'll your ass. No, she won't. She's like hundred pounds. So man, what? them be the cats that yeah, they, 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 no they, they jump on your ass. She ain't head. got no she dog really in her. <laughs> yeah, I mean that. I mean, other than like she's got a lot of true crime knowledge, and she's really smart. Like I could see her killing me in my sleep. She's gonna, she gonna be barbecue grilling here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Right. Would what you like some spaghetti? Like, mm. <laughs> we said, where Erica? Uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. oh. have some more chili. <laughs> <laughs> right. Damn, this is, this is you crunch on like a wedding ring, you're like, oh, ooh. You know? <laughs> get Alfredo. No, no. Is, is this a piece of hair like this? This look like a mullet hair. <laughs> this looks like a mullet. You know, I got whore tendencies, but you know what? It's called sexual discipline. And I get, you know, like, right, if we got a discipline to go to the gym, right? And you, you say, I'm going to go to the gym four days a week. Well, we know that if you stray away from whatever it is, if you don't have discipline, then you're not going to go to the gym for four four days a week more than a couple of days. The thing is, is what what happens when you don't go to the gym? You're paying for nothing, right? You, you start you you work yourself back into it, right? right because right. you have to have some kind of discipline. So if you are a sexual deviant, you've got to try to practice Man. some sort of discipline. You don't just let yourself go. I'm sorry, <laughs> but when you fuck five supervisors mm -hmm. in like a one or two year span of time, you know, in a 16 man or whatever department, 60 man department, when you're fucking like a quarter of the department and you're like, you just don't have any discipline. Well, That's on you, bitch. I mean, it's who did she got kids? No, she didn't oh. have any. No, but and then, like she tried to come out. I, I guess her boyfriend's left her. I don't know that jo Josh is her boyfriend left her yet. Husband, Supposedly boy. they were swingers, and he was right. Into it. I think that they, they, he left, but I think he like recanted that. See, they were like super religious. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what her, her fault is. You don't eat where you shit. Right, dog, a lot of dogs, and I have a yeah. dog, big a dog. He's being in his cage. You open the door to let him out to go poop, whatever you know. You look. I put his dog food on one side, on the side I know that he gonna eat and drink. On the other side in the back corner is where he shit at. Mm -hmm. He will not lay down over there either. He'll yeah, lay right. closer to his food don't sleep where you before shit. he don't right. where you shit. So it's out. the same uh, principle, yeah, same thing. If you at, at work, you don't don't sleep with your coworkers because they're gonna talk. Yeah. First of all, they're gonna talk. They they're gonna share. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I like, that's you a know, just swinging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, even if you're a swinger, let's say, how about we not like? How about we not fucking? I mean, listen, let's, let's let's just try not to be swingers either. Like, let's have some fucking sexual discipline, you know? Um, 
Jesus, and if you are swinging, don't put it all over the internet that you're swinging and well, getting you know, all this other same, shit and doing your OnlyFans yeah, and all this other deviant yeah, well, bullshit. You know, like, you know, do, work with a, your shit with your wife and your spouse and y'all figure out your kinks on your own. But like putting that shit out there is not is not healthy and it's not going to do your kids any justice. It's not, well, it's, it's not going to do your marriage any justice. It's not going to help yeah, your marriage. What did you say about somebody said it was religious or something? Well, Laverne, she said like they were. Am I wrong on that? That like that she was like that she was raised real religious or something. We covered this story last year. Those be the main freaks. Or like yeah, religious, wasn't, wasn't religious, he, religious wasn't, folks. Wasn't he the preacher's the son? One. Be in the church. Dead like, are you out there? Giving it up. I think. Well, I'm looking down to see if the marriage part. So I think they're still married. I can. Okay, but isn't he part. like the the, the pastor's her. son? Husband. Those are the Find main that freaks, out for man. Me. Youth pastors and all that. Uh, yeah, that's a whole list. Somebody got on Facebook. Actually, my wife lost her uh, virginity to a pastor's son. See, that's what I said. Oh, they, my wife. Okay. They, yeah. uh, they, they, I was the pastor's son. They, uh, I'm just kidding. I wasn't. I was going to say, I meant your daddy. Your daddy don't. She lost her virginity. Your daddy don't fit no pastor. I'm sorry. I it's love funny. the dad. He's funny oh, to me. He's cool. Yeah. But, uh, um, all right. Last story of the night. We'll get out of here. Um, by the way, you guys have been awesome in the chats. Will Cray, Davey, we appreciate you guys so yeah. much. Um, she said, Davey says her and her husband are swingers. I don't know what the other word is. A F A I K. Um, are they're, they're swingers? I, I I don't know. Her um, and her husband. Afiak. It looks like an acronym, but. As far as I know. Oh, oh as far it. as I damn, you got it. Okay. So they're, they're swingers. Yeah. But it, listen, it, 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 just because you're a swinger, Davey, doesn't mean you can go to your work site and fuck five people and ruin their marriages what? and ruin their careers. <laughs> like, go be a swinger in another town oh, you or know what, like outside of your fucking job. You know what I'm saying? I'm thing. not yelling at Here's you, my Davey. thing. She ain't put a gun to them motherfuckers' head. They, no, they, 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 you they, know, they got hard you know, and they, they went up in it. You and they know think that was going to go girl puts it out there's going to be a lot of dudes that are going to take it exactly you don't even have to be that exactly angry. but where's their discipline right. at they, they don't have it exactly but so we can't put it all on her though no but she don't get five hundred thousand, and they don't get shit well i mean shit they the one that they shouldn't have they're going they well, the ones were married too. but she, she was single one she of the was dudes. single she might have been who cares had a so why did she get five hundred thousand dollars now why did she get five hundred thousand dollars why did she get five hundred thousand that's my question why did she didn't she get fired or whatever Oh yeah, or something over. I think they all did because oh, yeah. it's civil rights. Oh, it says civil her civil rights were violated. So what? What? what Here, was I'll go the, read the article. The Let's just thing. go and read the article before we go into it really quick. Her husband uh, was the son of a pastor. Boom! I fucking knew it. Uh, well, I got granted. Okay, let's see here. Um, no woman should have to ever endure this type of abuse. Ugh! You blew a dude in the locker room. You had a threesome on his fucking boat oh, with I, his wife, I think, in one of these cases. That, I mean, these were like, she was in a male get the dominated fuck industry. out of here, you crazy five, five, bitch. Five, five, five. What happened to me in Laverne Police Department? I can't even fucking read this. You guys got me pissed. Laverne Police Department should never uh, allow that to happen to anyone. You should allowed you, they should have hired your crazy slut ass to go in there and slut up the whole place. And listen, I'm I'm glad that you expose these other dudes who don't have any sexual discipline. Fuck all of you guys. Get all of you out of there. And your wife should be happy that you that you found out now before you uh, have even more kids or you spend even more money. Like she did you a favor. Those guys obviously didn't really love you if that's what they're doing. But this bitch was having threesomes with these motherfuckers. She, good, good. she was Keep blowing folks. Keep reading it. I think for Megan and other females in male-dominated industries, it's unmittingly a victory for her and others. Says Mansfield. That's uh, Such that's that's her eternity. There is, is no admission it? of guilt by the city, but they did agree that Megan be paid a half a million dollars. I mean, that's See, just get her to the city. Yeah, the city. The city's money. gonna pay they it just off. Just want anyway. to pay it off and get she it over. Did, listen, this bitch ain't innocent. I mean, listen. Hey, you want to fight with me in the chats about it? Let's go. Like, if you guys have some information where I'm wrong, present it to me, and I'll put my foot my mouth i got no problems doing this this fuck but, but the way i see it and the way the facts are presented to me she's batshit crazy will gray says i get basically zero tail and uh, my standards are higher than shit, no. um but see what if the shoe was on the other foot Eric? if that was me and i fuck five to six seven female officers i don't think you should get paid five hundred thousand dollars but, but that's the thing though 
we're not going to tell first. I mean, yeah, we, we might tell, but we're not going to play victim. We're going to be like, yeah, okay, I knocked off four or five co-workers. You know what I'm saying? I don't see it. Like, we covered this case a year ago. But There's I nothing yeah. in this case. I mean, she literally blew one of the dudes in the bathroom, which is kind of fucking gross. Um, I mean, now, now I mean, I'm did, not did they, they fire her? Was there anything in writings, I guess, not the moral, but was there something that saying? Uh, um, well, yeah, they were fucking on duty. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, see, yeah. Yeah. And I think there's like she some was, infidelity. Yeah, yeah. She was starting to get 500000 I don't get that part. I don't either. I mean, yeah, they they she got caught. That was right. the problem. Not, not a victim. She got caught. If they didn't get caught, they would keep doing it. Exactly. But, how exactly. Did, but, but why does she get 500000 Well, Falconator seems to think she's a prostitute. That's why. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She was working she was, undercover. Falconator Chad says she was a prostitute. Um, <laughs> she, was, she, was undercover. she was doing a weed and seed, dude. Uh, you know, but I mean, this chick was knocking them off, man. And like, hey, listen. Just you got caught doing whore things. Just admit that you're a whore and let your co-workers admit that they're whore. publicly shame all of you. You got the public shaming. I'm good with that. And just go fuck off. Like, I mean, I don't the five hundred thousand dollars. Hey, listen, if I got five hundred thousand dollars and I knew I was a whore, and she knows, she knows she's a whore. Look, then she, you just take your five hundred thousand dollars and go away. You don't did. go, nobody deserves to be treated like that. Look. And I'm a victim from for for my whore tendencies. She got more money. Then the dude that got beat up by them five officers. Oh yeah, well, the that family's dead. Yeah, he did, but the family still can sue. Wrong for them. I mean, sure, sue. but you think that they're probably oh, yeah. gonna get a lot more than five hundred thousand? Wow. We ever? Hey, I bet you that family gets. You a know lot how they money. don't? You know how they do? How do they do? You know how to do? Sometimes they don't, man. They take but wait, that. They really low, paid they, out like thirty were, grand for a dead they dog. Were, they will lowball your ass to get you to take it. You can ask for ten million. And then you'd be like, well, they settled out of court for $375,000. All I'm saying is, 000. Margaret, <laughs> could you please on camera put your hand on my leg or something like that so I can see you for $500,000 and tell everybody I shouldn't be treated that way? No. Damn. Because my thing, I'd be like, look, what, what you going to do? <laughs> you ain't going to get shit because I ain't got shit. <laughs> no. What you do? I need somebody to sexually get... abuse me so I can sue you for $500,000. But, you, but, you, 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 but, you know, <laughs> but here's, here's the thing. You know, when we, Thanks. But when we Thanks, was in the Mark. military, when we was in the military, well, I was infantry, and we played practical jokes. Sure. Some of the guys played practical jokes that went a little too far. We For were like, sure. man, fuck. If that happened to me, hey, we going to be up in here fighting. Guilty. I mean, we had guys when I was in Panama, they dude was sleeping, fell asleep, oh. and they tied his ass to his cot. Mm. He was a, he he fucked around and laid on his stomach. <laughs> and they tied oh his God. ass with duct tape, had him taped up, and then they took a cigar Pulled his pants down. Oh, pulled, yeah, he had on shorts. Had to, remember them yeah, daggone yeah, shorts we used to yeah. wear? Some little ass but yeah, yeah. They pulled it down and took some daggone or uh, a red marker and drew a face and took a damn cigar and stuck it in his ass and took pictures. Was taking pictures. Oh, yeah, this is back in the somebody. day when we Listen, had the guys, camera. Um, that's gross, you know and I would murder somebody for doing that to me. <laughs> yeah, but P. Diddy's in our chats right now. It's the real P. Diddy, I'm pretty sure. There's a picture, and it's the internet. And he says, come party with me. But he spelled come, C-O-M-E, instead of C-U-M. So it, never mind. It's not the real, if it was a real P. Diddy, it would have said C-U-M, party with me. Uh, <laughs> um, it say P. Damn it, P. Diddy. Give me a couple of million. We'll check it. We'll check it. <laughs> no, that's a couple cool. of million. It's not P. Diddy because he said come, C-O-M-E. You know the real Diddy. Diddler would have said, "See you in party right, with me." Right, right. You know See you in. Send me a send me a flight. <laughs> He's like, how, "How old's Margaret?" And, and you're like, "You're like, you're like uh, 45." He's like, uh, "How old?" And you're like, "35." He's like, "How old?" You're like, "22." He's like, "How old?" You're like, "17." He's like, "I'm on a flight. Now. I'm on my way." I couldn't read it fast enough. Uh, I mentioned Swallow for 500 and P. Diddy appears. <laughs> oh. oh, the white one going to be first. <laughs> Wait, which white one? Because he's Jay Durrell white. No, oh, right, right, right. they ain't talking right, about right. skin color. <laughs> <laughs> that racist Not motherfucker. <laughs> um, I guess if P. Diddy was going to take ass, you think he would take a white ass or a black ass? Oh, he'd get you first. Yeah. He'd be first one. Yeah, I get that pretty face. Yep. Sweet face. Gonna, affirmative action. Uh, he wants his reparations oh, out of my b hole. <laughs> you, <laughs> you. Who was you? He said you. Oh, P. Diddy, you son of a bitch. He said you. 
<laughs> you son of you a bitch, you. Oh. Eric. Mm. All right, guys, we had so oh, much no, no. fun. Tupac's Put Revenge. That should be the name of our, our next group <laughs> chat. Tupac <laughs> Revenge. I'll do you like Justin. Oh, I'll do you like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Uh, uh, Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Well, yeah, two one of those. I take a record deal. You you get it, you have them for the record deal. <laughs> I get both of them. I just want to be famous. So whatever it takes, people. I'm, wait, I'm, I'm waiting for takes, New Diddy. Edition to come out with some shit. Cause you know they was kids. Who? Uh, new Edition. I'm, mm. I'm waiting for Bobby Brown to come out with some shit. Yeah. <laughs> all right guys we'll see y'all next week hey don't forget we got true crying tomorrow tuesday night um if you haven't gone back and listened to that ray lewis episode that we did on the sports show um that uh that uh john and um uh jason from one more and i'm out of your podcast they covered the whole uh ray lewis murders absolutely phenomenal podcast anti-hero has a new podcast coming out with marcus latrell exposing a market they have like undercover seals in there to expose this shit they 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 went so hard on this podcast you guys are going to absolutely love it what a great show um so make sure you head over to the anti-hero podcast this wednesday we've got more news to cover all the political news that you can take and then friday we come back with our case breakdown we got a guest um from officer news daniel carr daniel carter Yep, Daniel Carter on Friday for a breakdown, so that's going to be good. Thursday, this Thursday, your boy will be uh, oh, hello, opening everyone. for Tommy Davidson. Oh, I'll be with Tommy Davidson, as you know, Tommy Where Davidson at? in uh, Rocky Mount, Rocky Mount, North Rocky Carolina. Mount. He, yep, Rocky he's, he's actually on tour with Cat Williams, and he's and Friday. Up. Well, Friday he's they go into Greenville, South Carolina, and on his way he's doing a comedy show, and I'm on the show. Nice. So well, get good, your tickets. Good for you. And then next Monday I won't be here because I'll be in Lynchburg. Virginia doing a comedy show. Uh, that's comedy song. You when he's told. Yeah. Wait, are you? <laughs> so she won't have Give no him ah. my money. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see y'all. Have a good night. See you, P. Diddy. Uh, yeah. Good luck tonight. And uh, guns up, get